we're so glad you're joining us on this Friday on Hope Today, and you are part of our family. And today we're gonna take a moment to dive into a really important conversation because we know that someone in your family is suffering from something that is really, that is like crushing in your heart, and we're gonna talk about it today. I'm here with Matt and Anna, and Matt, tell us about our guest that's coming up today. Yeah, our, our guest is very special. His name is Andy Partington. He writes this book, Hope and Addiction, Understanding and Helping Those Caught and it's grip and, and like you were saying Sid, like this one's a little bit personal yeah. you know because I think like any of us whether you yourself or you know somebody personally deals with an addiction of some sort and I think it's important to get to the root of it recognize it but also know how to successfully restore and recover an addiction so today's gonna be a great conversation I think that we're all going to be able to benefit here in the studio and for those watching at home too yeah, absolutely we're just so thankful for the different guests that we we have here on our show because they do bring that expert voice where as so many of us have the experiences of a loved one that is caught in addiction and to be able to have someone who has worked in that arena for so many years and is seeing the hearts of those addicted, that seeing the hearts of the family and the friends who so love that person and that they can speak hope, they can speak solutions, recovery, freedom. This will be a conversation that we just believe is gonna touch everyone who tunes in today. And you know, as we're going about to go into this conversation, one thing we just wanna say is that whether you are one that is suffering with addiction, there's no condemnation and there's no judgment. So if you're watching right now and maybe you had a relapse, maybe you're thinking about it right now, we just wanna say that we love you and we're here for you. And just because you're in it doesn't mean that you are so far from God and removed. No, God has a plan for you. And also to the families that are struggling, the mothers, the fathers, the spouses, the children, everyone that is around, this is an important conversation because we know that the problem, addiction, is the one that is in the midst and in the middle of the struggle. It is not the person, it is the addiction and is what the enemy uses to divide and to separate and to kill and to destroy. And today we are putting our foot in the ground here at Hope Today, here at Cornerstone. So wherever you're watching from, where we're putting now, like a, there's a line in the sand, we're saying enough is enough yes. and that we're all coming together as one, that we are gonna fight this together yeah. through the power of Jesus. Matt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And before I introduce our guests, do us a favor. Um, you know, share this episode, wherever you might be watching this from, get somebody, because, because again, you might know somebody personally that could benefit from what we're gonna talk about here today. So it's super important for you to get this message and this show out to somebody that you know. But hey, let's welcome our guests. It's no surprise that addiction is a worldwide epidemic. And according to the CDC, drug overdoses are the leading cause of death among Americans under the age of 50. Addiction can manifest in many different forms and it can leave those who are struggling with feelings of depression, loneliness, failure, and shame. So International Treatment Ministry Leader Andy Partington is our next guest, and he's written a book called Hope and Addiction. He joins us now to oversight or to insights on how we can better understand how to help those that are caught in this grip. Andy, welcome to Hope Today. Good morning, guys. It's, it's good to be with you. Yes. You know, Andy, this again, this is a personal topic and I know it's an important one. But before we dive in to a little bit of a deeper, maybe you can uh, introduce yourself to our viewers, you know, who you are and how you got to this point here today. Mm, yep. So my name is Andy. I lead the work of uh, Novo Communities, uh, which is an international ministry. We come alongside those in the developing world who've got a heart to, to work with those who are struggling with addiction in their communities. Um, and alongside that, we, wrote a, right, uh, we operate a motorcycle tourism business called Novo Adventures that, that generates the income or some of the income for the, for the work. Um, but really, I guess my story with addiction started in childhood. Um, I say I went into rehab at the age of three and I didn't leave until I was 18. And the reality is what my parents worked in that ministry throughout my childhood. And uh, really that was where I think I just saw how clearly recovery is possible. Um, it happens best in community and, it, and Christ is, is the, just the, the most significant beneficial bedrock for any kind of recovery. Yeah. Well, you know, a few of us were talking earlier before the show started. While most of us can talk about a typical household or neighborhood, you know, that we grew up in, like you said, you kind of grew up in a rehab community at such a young age, you know. So 
with that experience, was there a defining moment or moments that you've encountered that really kind of either helped you with addiction personally or really defined, you know, where it led you to today? Mm. I think for me, the most profound thing, I, I never expected to end up in this world myself. Um, I, I think the thing that really shaped me most profoundly and was the sort of seed then for a longer term involvement was my journey with addiction and recovery began immersed in a recovery community. And so for me, I had to learn the backstories of the guys I'd come to know as intelligent, capable, loving, um, passionate, purpose-filled people, you know? And, and I think it's always left me with just this profound confidence that recovery is absolutely possible, you know? And, and, and that, there's the seabed for me, is, is just the realization, hey, this is totally a, a possible thing. So, you know, your profession has really led you around the world, you know, not just here in the United States, but everywhere globally. And uh, in your experience, what's one thing that you've witnessed that is really a commonality with addiction, you know, across the globe? Mm, yeah, addiction around the world, all the, all the features change, but, but, but it's stealing lives around the world. You know, it costs the, the global community twice as much as cancer to deal wow. with addiction. It's, it's a global thing. What's the commonality? What underlines that? Everywhere you go, underneath the addiction itself is a set of problems and and the addiction takes root and it grows because it's solving an underlying set of problems you know i think one of the most important questions we can ask ourselves when it comes to addiction is not why the addiction but actually why the pain that underlies this addiction wow. and it doesn't whether you matter whether you go to bolivia to south africa to nicaragua to the uk to the us and across the country underneath it there's that same thing going on there's there's a set of questions that the addictive behavior is answering so how would one begin you know i'm thinking about me personally so i've had a close family member who honestly maybe in these past couple years i've only realized why he's struggled with his addiction and it's because of like you're saying some past pain right whether it's from a family or an experience of some sort whatever it might be you know, how does one begin to kind of start answering some of those questions to help them, you know, to come to a solution? Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, every story is different. And, and this is a really personal thing that's happening, you know, and the reality is that that, that takes time. But as, as we're looking at, at, at addiction the, the, and the recovery, there's, for me, the key question is, okay, what, is, what are we recovering from? Um, and there's both the actual addictive behavior, whether that's to gambling, to porn, to drugs, to alcohol, doesn't matter what it is. There's a, there's a habit that's developed. There's, there's, a, there's a track of thinking that's really become very strongly embedded. So the first question is, okay, how do you recover from that? Because that's the first recovery. And what's needed? You know, what's needed in terms of counseling? What's needed in terms of community? What's needed in terms of spiritual renewal, in terms of healing from past hurts? Um, and so that's that's the relationship. But then there is this relationship with the underlying issue. What what was driving this? You know, and I think at a, at a, a national level, we, we sort of talk a lot. There's a there's a Scottish proverb that says they speak of my drinking, but not of my thirst. And I think we tend to talk a lot about the drinking, about the drugs, about the porn. The question really is, OK, what why the thirst? You know, and at a, a social level, as we look around us, there's some key features, you know, we're, we're hopeless. There's a lot of hopelessness. There's a lot of people who at a very personal level think, I don't know what the future holds. I don't really know what I'm all about. When you talk to people who are in recovery, so often they will say emptiness was, was the feature of, of, of their lives prior to addiction. They felt something was missing. There was a hole, um, hopelessness, emptiness, this sense is a massive correlation between adverse childhood experiences and addiction. And so, you know, why the pain from the trauma of perhaps abuse, perhaps addiction in the family, perhaps divorce, lot, lots of things that drive us. And then, you know, socially, we're a very isolated society these days. Many of us, especially post-pandemic, are, are deeply disconnected. And all of that feeds into our vulnerability, creates a seedbed for addiction. 
Maybe we can dive into that a little bit, you know, because we're, we're just thinking about, yeah, out of this post-pandemic, I mean, we've, I think we've just seen, you know, even in our city itself, you know, addiction mm -hmm. skyrocket, right? I mean, what's something that you're just noticing, like, in the day and age that we're in that we should really be aware of? There are some big red flags, uh, you know, that we can either watch out for for those around us or maybe somebody mm -hmm. themselves need to be aware of today. Mm. You know, I think when you look at the when you look at the pandemic, uh, it drew to the surface a set of things that were already there. It, 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 it made present and manifest to us a set of things that have always been there. And so, yeah, there's this. I think particularly the way we live today, and and we, we the whole sense of you go it alone, the whole sense of you live independently, the whole sense of I don't need anyone. Actually, at a fundamental level, that makes us incredibly vulnerable to addiction, wow. incredibly vulnerable. Um, similarly, you know, again, there's, there's a, you know, we're a very religious society in many respects. And yet, actually, I think many still struggle with there's a deep emptiness, you know, and there's a, there can be a superficiality to, to some of the ways that we live and some of the ways that even as Christians that we do church that actually don't allow people to develop that deep de depth of relationship and connection with, with God. And I think the pandemic's flagged stuff up to us that was already there. Um, it's flagged up the issues we've got with yeah, family breakdown, with addiction in families, with abuse. Um, and, and for me, the heart really, a, a big driver with the book is really to say to us, hey, we need to step back and, and, and take a look at this because the pain that we're all experiencing and some are really manifesting worse than others is really telling us something about how we're living uh, as individuals and as a, a community more broadly. Mm. You know, one part in your book that I found interesting is you use the term false gods. And I think mm. that's so good, right? Because really these addictions, whether it's a, a substance of some sort or addictions can be in all types of different forms, right? You know, but they're all false gods trying to find the sense of strength or hope or whatever that might look like. Maybe you can expound on that a little bit, yeah, you know, your yeah. experience. What are these false gods that lead to addiction? Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking for escape. You know, we're looking for healing. We're looking for comfort. We're looking for, for connection. And again, I think one of the most important things we need to understand that is, is addiction doesn't develop overnight. You know, you don't, you're not addicted the first time you look at porn. You're not addicted the first time you, you even, yeah, whack up heroin. You know, it, 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 it takes time. But um, what's, what's driving that is, is a real... Um, a real need for solutions to real problems. And I think if we can come at this compassionately and say, hey, why do you need to escape so much? What is it? Why, why, why do you lack so much for community that the community you're finding in your using and in your addiction is so powerful? Um, I think we can, we can begin to find solutions and help one another. You know, Andy, as we're having this conversation, one thing I'm just thinking about the family member that's watching right now is that when you see your loved one spiraling out of control, the one thing that I know is very common is how you have to say the whole thing about codependency and manipulation. Mm. So can you speak mm. to that for a moment? And there has to, when there has to be a certain point where we, it's like you have to let them hit rock bottom. Mm. Mm, yeah, there's, yeah, it's 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 so difficult, you know. I used to work in the UK in a rehab and had, had far more direct contact personally with the families of those dealing with addiction. And that challenge of what's the thing that I can do that's going to help the person I love is 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 really 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 tough. Um, there is there's this this difference between caregiving and caretaking, and and I think one of the keys is to understand, you know, when am I stepping in to do something for my loved one that they can be doing for themselves? That's that's not helpful. When am I helping to create condi conditions that indirectly uh, help my loved one, give them a sort of recovery capital to build on. Um, I, but, but more broadly, I, I like to use and think about, there's a phrase in AA, which, is, which is, is so helpful for those in addiction, which is no one can do it for you, but you can't do it alone. No one can do it for you, but you can't do it alone. And I think for the loved ones, for those of us who walk alongside, that is every bit as true. And my, my kind of heart cry for everyone who's walking closely with someone in addiction is that they have their allies. They have their people around them who will support them um, because they're loved, they're valued. They don't exist simply to serve 
the, the recovery of their loved one, but they're passionately committed to trying to find solutions and find help. And, and that's not something you can do in your own strength. Uh, you need God's presence and you need the presence of good people in your life. That's powerful. I'm thinking about, okay, we're on this topic of what, you know, a loved one or a family can do, but maybe even as the church and a community, a church that's wanting to somehow, you know, help in this way, shape or form, but they might not know where to start. You know, with me being in full-time ministry, I've sadly seen people recover, but then I've also seen a great percentage not be able to recover, you know, so how, how can a church help in that manner? Mm -hmm. We go contend with the fact that the recovery is a long term process and, and, and people will relapse. And, and that is reality. And I think the sooner we get our heads around that, the, the better. Mm. Um, but but as, as the church, yeah, what we can what can we what can we do? I think two things. One, we can bring those who've got recovery experience right into the heart of our church and its leadership. So um, I talk about the need for recovery champions in, ev in every church community. And, and, and that's vital, that those who actually get this stuff and have the experience are shaping the way we do everything and are connecting us with all the external services and are, are just creating a visibility for addiction and creating a, a sort of shame-free environment where actually, because this isn't just about those who are deep into addiction, it's also about those of us who are on the slide in. So, you know, talk about the different about the need to be addiction preventing recovery promoting communities. And actually, we need both sides. Um, so that's the really practical thing. I think the other thing we can do is really just ensure that as church communities, we all understand what we're dealing with here. Um, and there tends to be a lean one way or the other. There tends to either be a lean towards saying, OK, this is all about therapy. This is all about 12 step groups. This is all about relapse prevention planning and, and what I call the strategies and the tactics of, of, of recovery. Um, but actually, there's another side to it. Um, I talk a bit about in the book about Batman and Spider-Man and the difference between how Batman does what Batman does, which is through those tools, it's through the Batarang, it's through the Batmobile, it's through Robin at his side. And how Spider-Man does what Spider-Man does. Spider-Man's ability to, to, to do all that he does comes from that bite from the toxic spider. Mm. It comes from an inner transformation that flows out. And I think as the church, what we need to really recognize is it's not all about the, the Batman side. It's not also all about the Spider-Man side. Yes, we need folks to encounter Christ. A, a relationship with Father, Son, Holy Spirit is going to be the transformational X factor mm. for recovery. But actually, if a person encounters that but doesn't connect with others in recovery, doesn't deal with the underlying drivers of their addiction, doesn't establish healthy patterns of relationship or handling finance or whatever it might be, they're always going to be vulnerable. And so I think as a church, it's about coming alongside with that kind of understanding to say, hey, there's a balance. There's Batman stuff here. There's Spider-Man stuff. Um, we need it all. And we need to support one another in a, in a really powerful kind of sense of community, rugged, um, hands-on community. Thank you so much for your time, Andy. You know, we're wrapping up here short. Uh, but we just want to encourage every one of you, again, if you know somebody or this could encourage you to get his book, Hope and Addiction, Understanding Helping Those Caught in Its Grip. Andy, it was so great to have you on the show. I know this is going to benefit so many more people that maybe we never will encounter. But thank you for your wisdom, for what you're doing across the globe. I know it's, it's not going unnoticed, and it's doing valuable things for the kingdom of God. Actually, thank you. My pleasure. Well, hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back with a powerful scripture and talk a little bit more on this topic. When we, uh, we'll see you soon. No matter your age or circumstances, God wants you to move forward. Join best-selling author and teacher Dr. David Jeremiah in a masterclass, revealing how to live fearlessly. You'll discover that it's never too late to find your purpose. Dr. David Jeremiah reveals powerful ways for people of any age to live a life that's meaningful. Inside Forward, you'll uncover strong Bible teaching coupled with incredible real-life stories and practical biblical insight. Learn how God wants to expand your dreams, give you divine direction, equip you with tools to overcome fear, and much more. Request your copy of this life-changing book when you support Cornerstone Television. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org donate. 
Find air times for Turning Point with Dr. David Jeremiah at ctvn.org. Donate and request his book, Forward. Thank you for your partnership with Cornerstone TV. We're so glad you're joining us this Friday on Hope Today, and we just wrapped up a powerful conversation with Andy talking about addiction. And I know as a lot of you are watching, maybe you are the one that is the addict or the addict that is in recovery, or you're the family member. Maybe you're in the throes of it, or maybe you're on the other side of it. No matter where you are, I just want to share a quote from one of our dear ministry partners and friends. It's called Light a Life Rescue Mission that's here in the Pittsburgh area, and they, they help the homeless, the hurting, and the addicted. They help so many men, women, and children in our area. And I'll never forget a quote I heard uh, the executive director, Jarrell Gilliam, say once when I had an opportunity to do some work with them. And he said, you know, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is community. And that is so true. I think a lot of times we get so focused on the problem of the issues that we take our eyes off the fact that we need people around us. We need those to love on us. We need those to pull us out of the doldrums. We need those when we're in the pit of it and we're crying out for help, or maybe you're right now and you're like, I'm so, I know, like there's like you're so tired of having that drink. You're so tired of taking that bump. You're so tired. You don't want to shoot up. You don't want to snort. You don't want to do it. You're so tired of it. But it's so important that you're able to lean on someone when you're feeling those vulnerable moments. It's important for you to call someone when you hear those voices speaking to you and saying, just take another hit. It's so important for you as the mom or as the husband or the wife to call on someone when you're like, things are so out of control. The money is out falling out of the house. I don't know what to do. We need to lean on each other. It is so important that we do so, Anna. Right. Yeah, I so appreciate the holistic approach that Andy takes because as he said, Jesus, the relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is the X factor mm. that ultimately leads to victory over addiction. But we cannot ignore the power of community, yeah. the power of relationship, because addiction lies to you constantly, is constantly whispering in your ear that you can never be free, that you aren't worthy of anything that this world has, that God has, that your purpose is so far gone, like you've messed up so much. And to have people around you who love you, who accept where you're at, who wants to listen to your story, and they can speak that encouragement, that hope, that truth that will speak louder than the addiction. And it will begin to give you hope and freedom and be able to move you forward. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about what you're talking about and what we're saying here about community in general and someone speaking into your life. The importance of the right words being spoken into mm -hmm. your life though matters, right? You know, yeah. it's good to have good relationships, but it's even better to have godly relationships. And so being a part of your local church or somebody that you know is a believer and reaching out to them, you know, or maybe you're even that believer and you need to reach out to somebody that you that's struggling because the word of God is alive, breathing, and active. So it's one thing to just have words spoken to you, but it's another thing to have the word of God breathe into you, spoken into you. That's what takes root. The word of God is what changes everything and heals all things in our lives. So I think it's important, you know, the type of people that we're reaching out to, I shouldn't say type, yeah. but who we're reaching out to can really matter at the same time, because we want those to be able to stand in faith with us, right? We want those to be able to believe with us, but we also want somebody to speak the word of God said over our lives when we're going through something like that. Yeah, when we're going through it, I just like what we're having this conversation, just even God is like really reminded me is like, I feel like there's just such a shame. There's so much shame attached to addiction. I feel like even for the addict, I feel like there's sometimes in churches, we push them aside like, oh my gosh, you're not a Christian, not that. Can we stop that? Because there's a lot of Christians that believe in God, they read their Bible, they love Jesus, but they're struggling. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we put that sin and we just put this like X on them and we try to excommunicate them, but that is not the case. And then I feel like there's so much shame attached to that, that like if you're dealing with that shame, if you feel like I have relapsed again, this is the 10th time I've been in rehab so many times, whatever it may be, 
know that there is no shame. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And for the family member that you are just in over your head and you're overwhelmed and you don't know how to like open up or share because you're so embarrassed because it's, it hits addiction. If we're real, it hits every color, every background, every social economic status, it hits everyone. And I think the moment that we begin to speak and break our silence and say, you know what? I'm going through this. This is what I'm happening. We expose the enemy. And so right now we want to just take a moment to like pray for you. If you are in a, if you're an addict, if you're in recovery, wherever you may be, we just want to take a moment and to pray. So Father God, Right now, in the name of Jesus, we just lift up those, Father God, that are hurting from this demonic stronghold, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we just bind the spirit of addiction right now. God, we bind the spirit of manipulation and the codependency, Father God, for it to exist, oh God. And Lord Jesus, we just pray that right now for that person right now that I really sense that struggling, that you would arrest them in the spirit, oh God. That Lord God, even when they try to take that next hit, oh God, that you would block the high, oh God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for that person that's watching right now that may be thinking about shooting up heroin that has it on the table oh God that the spoon and the needle is right there Father God we bind it right now in the name of Jesus and we Father God we declare they shall live and not die and Lord God we pray for the family members that have been on the front lines that are weary that are broken Father God Jesus we know Father God that you're coming and you give them rest Father God that you give them wisdom Father God and you'd also give them strategy Lord God we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this epidemic would be destroyed father God that we declare and decree that we're declaring a war on drugs father God in the spirit of it that is destroying families and loved ones and father God we just pray that your hand would be upon your people like never before so we thank you Jesus in your name we pray amen and know that we're always here for you at our prayer line at 888-665-4483 final thoughts yeah, so I, ju I just have the person who is addicted on my heart today. As Andy said, you are a person of compassion. You are a loving person, someone with purpose and kindness and so much to give to this world. Don't let your addiction tell you that you're someone other than God's masterpiece. God is calling you to himself today where you can find rest, where he can put his wings over you and protect you and love on you and whisper that love into your heart. He is the master over all the pieces of your broken heart. And it is God, your creator, who will build you up and put you back together again. He will lift you out of that pit of addiction and stand you on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Friend, there is hope for you today. Reach out, have a great weekend.